compliment. Um, it's the first time in uh, 30 years, actually, that we've done Hebrews. Now, I, I wasn't, I, I was barely around 30 years ago in 1987. Uh, but it's really cool to see that we're finally to that point that we're able to pull the study in again and, and, and jump into it. So um, just a quick question for Taylor. Can you go ahead and elaborate? Who really wrote the book of Hebrews? You aren't taking the mic, Taylor. No, you, you can explain that. You're the minister. Uh, what? <laughs> there we go. Well, um, Does it mean Paul? It's, well, some, some people think we Paul. Know, do we? we don't know. Okay. No, we don't okay. Know. Thanks for trying to trick me. Yeah. It's a trick question. Unfortunately, we don't do those in Bible quizzing. Uh, in some of the first questions, I was actually looking at uh, the 1967 questions, and there was like one of the questions in 1967 was, how many times does the word evolve appear in Genesis chapter 1? You know that one? Zero? Zero times. That's the correct answer for 10 points. I was at uh, Nationals, and it might have been John, so whatever John was. Sure. Intermediate National Game 2000. 2000. But one of the questions was, which chapters of our study do not contain the name John <laughs> or Jesus? Maybe it was Jesus. Do not contain the name Jesus. And um, I don't remember if I got it right or wrong, or even another time I got it right or wrong, but I remember my dad said, well, we should have contested because we don't learn what the word doesn't contain. We learn what the word does contain. So I was always, because uh, it's been on my mind, like, you know, yeah, I don't say which ones don't have something. I say which ones do have something. But anyway. Sure. And what's one of the neat things, uh, Quizzing originated from a, um, a really a desire to get into the Word, to learn the Word, and I, from based on the history that we've looked into, there was no intention that young people would be learning hundreds and hundreds of scriptures. It was more of a uh, an, engage, an engaging way to get young people in the Word, and what came out of it were young people who really were willing to dedicate themselves above and beyond what was required or expected of them. It's more than just reading through it, really investing it into your hearts. And so, um, if you have I haven't been in these, but we're going to try to do a walkthrough sometime during our broadcast, uh, which has a side note. We do have this quiz, and then we're going to be taking a break, and then we're going to be going into the intermediate and the experience final. So all of you who are watching this, you may have to hop off of this particular um, feed on Facebook once we get done with this next quiz, and you can jump onto the next feed, uh, which is going to be, what time do we have scheduled for that? 4.30 is intermediate, 5.30 is experience. So 4.30 uh, intermediate. It will be there, and that's Eastern time. And then we are going to be uh, commentating on the intermediate quiz, and then 5:30 for the experience. Or the experience will happen immediately following the intermediate. So um, it's a it's going to be a great time. Uh, it's going to be a very uh, interesting final, and we are excited to see what's going to be happening next. I think we have a little bit of time left, um, but. The 15th anniversary exhibit is going to be inside of the arena. The General Youth Division has been absolutely awesome. We didn't think we could fit in there because it's a great exhibit, uh, but it's actually going to be inside the arena this year at Youth Congress. And now Taylor, in addition to being the Florida District uh, Quiz Master, is also the one. Oh, wait, sounds like we're jumping back in here. And so we're going to jump in to view our team, our New Jersey Delaware team. Um, and our Louisiana this, uh, three team from Alexandria, is Louisiana. To, uh, either Let's teams, jump in and see how it goes. Uh, expect uh, excellence, and uh, as we have seen this year and in previous years, and uh, we just trust that the Lord is going to have His way in this quiz, and um, they are going to offer their best, and we want to provide an atmosphere uh, in which they can do it. All right. So thank you, audience. Welcome to uh, New Jersey, Delaware one from Newark, Delaware, and Louisiana 3 here on yellow from Alexander, Louisiana. Without further ado then, this quiz is now in session. Question number one is worth 10 points. Question, what had not appeared in men? Yellow, one. Interruption. Time. That is incorrect, and this interrupted question will be reread to New Jersey, Delaware without interruption. It's worth 10 points. Question. What had not appeared in many days as recorded in Chapter 27? Red, three. Neither sun nor stars. 
That is correct. Question number two is a two-part question worth 10 points question. Chapter 1, verse 14 refers to continuing. Yellow, three. Interruption. Continuing with what? In what? With one accord in prayer and supplication. That is correct. Question number three. Question number three is worth 10 points. Question. How is Tertullus described? Yellow two. Interruption. Described in Acts 24 1, a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. That is correct. Chapter question number four is a two part question worth. 10 points question. Verse 6 of chapter 27 mentions a ship. Yellow 2. Interruption. Ship of where? Selling into where? Alexandria, Italy. That is correct. Question number 5 is worth 10 points. Question. What senate is mentioned? Yellow 2. Interruption is mentioned in Acts 521, the Senate of the Children of Israel. That is correct. Question number six is worth 10 points. Question. Lucius was a who? Yellow one. Interruption. Lucius was of where? Cyrene. That is correct. Question number seven is worth 10 points. Question. What did Festus say? Much learning had. Yellow three. Interruption. What did Festus say? Much learning had made Paul. Much learning hath made thee mad. That is correct. Question number eight. Is a quotation question worth 10 points? Question. To the centurion and to the soldiers in verse 31. Yellow two. Interruption. In verse 30. One of Acts chapter 27, what Paul said, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. That is correct. Question number nine is a two-part question worth 20 points. Question. Peter, according to verses 46, 47, and 48 of chapter 10. And Red two. Interruption. Answered what and commanded what? Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord? That is correct. Question number 10. Is a quotation completion question worth 20 points? Question. For we? Yellow three. Interruption. For we have found. This man, a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. That is correct. Question number 11 is a quotation question worth 20 points. Question. Quote the statement of Stephen following his question. Yellow two. Interruption. Following the one in which he questions, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which are before the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers? Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? Time. So on this question, um, he interrupted, so he not only did he to finish the question, he then had to quote it, and technically he was quoting two verses because he was quoting a statement, um, and a statement has to begin after a point of punctuation, um, such as a P 
period, question mark, or an exclamation, and then it has to end with a period. So this statement was over two verses, and time was called just as he was finishing the verse, or just as he was finishing the statement. So we're not sure if he got the entire statement out before time was called. And he did go very quick, and I think that sometimes, you know, quizzers feel this pressure to answer this in quote very quick, which sometimes messes them up. Um, I know when I was in Quizzing Taylor, uh, I would quote to myself, but I would always quote fast, and I realized my last year of quizzing, when I got to the quiz table, I tried to slow myself down, and I made mistakes because I had spent every single day that year quoting at one speed, and then I was trying to change how I quoted at the quiz board. So there's an entire uh, other side of quizzing that a lot of times we don't see when we're sitting in the audience. Uh, we didn't see every single day that they've been studying the word and learning this and how they've been studying and how they've been saying things. And all of that leads up to moments like this. And uh, the nice thing is they didn't have this when we were quizzing, but um, the instead of using a tape recorder or a handheld recorder, they are oh, they are uh, being recorded by a laptop and a, music and a program, so we are able to slow down right. um, what they're saying and we listen very closely. So very rarely are we not able to tell exactly what the quizzer said because we've been able to listen to it at such a slow speed. Um, if you're looking at the score, that number that's changing, 501 seconds, the big green number, that's a 10 minute uh, countdown. According to the manual, the judges, the officials have 10 minutes to deliberate um, a ruling. So that's why you see Sure, and as much as it seems like 10 minutes is a lot of time, it's, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a definitely a good thing um, because to have moved it down. I heard of one quiz, this was in the 70s, so we're looking at a little bit of history this year. They said that it was a district tournament and they talked about the contest for two hours. Wow. And then they broke the entire day and said, everyone believe we're going to start this quiz again tomorrow. And they came back tomorrow, debated it for another hour, and then finished the quiz. That's which crazy. Is one of the longest contests. Because obviously you have three judges. You have an odd number of judges for that reason. You need to make sure that if, the, if two judges disagree on something, um, that you have a third judge who is able to make the call. Yeah. And then you're able to have a, a really the fairest way to be able to look and based on what they're hearing on the, the tape. Um, Recording. And quoting. No, they're recording, hearing it on the recording. Oh, hearing, uh, hearing it on the recording, not the tape. I'm sorry, I'm still <laughs> going old school when you had to rewind it. Do you ever remember that, Taylor, when you were um, you were sitting at the radio for the recorder in your district? Were you with the cassette tape? You no, know that? not with the cassette tape. That was always a judge. Yeah, were you with the judge? We have handheld recorders. No, we've had handheld recorders in Florida for years, like since maybe even when I was in senior quizzing, so. Sure, sure, but, but like when nice I was in senior ones. quizzing, we had tape still, no. and then you That's sometimes would forget. Because he's from Arkansas. You know, you know, I brought MP3 players to the Arkansas district as the <laughs> district coordinator. Um, and sometimes you were running this tape, and it would run out of tape in the middle of a quote because you had to flip the tape over. I mean, I know we're going old school here. Correct. Okay, and this is correct. Question number 12 is a three-part question worth 20 points question. Having sworn with an oath to David... A Red to... Interruption. To David, that of what, according to what, God would raise up whom is found in 2 verse 30. Sworn with the note to him that of the fruit of his loins, put into the flesh, would raise a Christ to sit on his throne. Time. And that is incorrect. And this interrupted question will be reread to Louisiana without interruption. It's a three part question worth 20 points. Question. Having sworn with an oath to David, according to chapter 2, verse 30, why would God do what? How? Yellow, one. Being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn to note to him that God would raise up Christ to sit on David's throne of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh. The fruit of David's loins. Time. And 
as we're discussing this, if you are on our Facebook live stream, feel free to throw a question in there. If you have any questions about what's going on or if you want to get an expert like Taylor Locke's opinion on the right way to coach or the right way to quiz in these situations, we'd love to get any feedback that you have there. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go over here our video here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super tempting in these situations when you're a good quizzer and uh, the other team has been hitting, and they've been hitting accurately. Great, incredible hits for you to want control. I know when I was a quizzer, I, I wanted control of the questions, even if I was getting it wrong, and I didn't realize that. Did you ever face that when you were in quizzing, Taylor? Definitely a little bit. I was. I really like to be right, though, so I often I don't feel like I jumped in too early just because I knew that if I jumped in too early, I was still going to get it wrong. So, but you do see a lot that... You know, they want to get to the buzzer, so they're just like, okay, I'm just gonna get to the buzzer no matter what, and it can start to backfire them. Or sometimes it's just that that catalyst that they need. That's true, and and sometimes it works. It never worked out that well for me. No, but, me neither. That's um, why I didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there was, uh, uh, there are, you know, as a quizzer, you can either get eight correct and quiz out, or if you get five incorrect answers, then you actually also have to leave the quiz board. So eight correct, you have to leave the quiz board. Five incorrect, you have to leave it. There are some quizzers that I know that would not leave that quiz board until they had 13 questions answered. Wow. And so they were going to be off the quiz board, one way or the other. But they made sure that they were, they were hitting every 13 of the 20 questions. Um, and so I, I don't, I hope that I, I, I didn't do that. I don't know exactly. Looking back, it's been over a decade now since yeah. we've been in Cousin Taylor. We're getting into history books. And even though Ryan is a math teacher, he meant 12 questions. You can't get 13 in a quiz. You can either get eight right and four incorrect, which is 12, or five wrong, four incorrect, and seven right, which is still 12. Sure. Now we have a uh, question here. One of the questions is, what does the one C and one E mean uh, inside this small? What, what does that mean when it says one C and one E on the score sheet, on the score? Okay, so we're looking at Carson's name right now. One C means one correct. He's answered one question correct, or he's been ruled correct on one question. And the E means error, which is incorrect. So he has one error. And uh, a quizzer can have eight correct, and then they're awarded an extra 10 po points, and then they leave the board. Or a quizzer can have five errors. So once a quizzer has five errors within a quiz, then they also have to leave the board. So Carson has one correct question and one error to this point. Oh, we have one other question um, from Jody earlier on. She asked, is this the same team that won last year? And this is the team that New won Jersey last Delaware's year. Team. New Jersey, Delaware. Uh, they had an incredible tournament last year. And they, um, they, uh, did they win the first uh, round? Uh, yep, and I think they were undefeated. Yeah, okay, I think they were undefeated last year. So a great team, solid, consistent from year to year. Um, and they, they lost in the um, semifinals of round one this year. Uh, who did they lose to in that? In round they one. lost to Western One, who's currently around to sure. be the champion. So they lost to Western One, who is the champions, which means they had to come back through the bracket. So they flipped a couple quizzes now, and they're in a great position. Uh, and, and both teams are in a great position. They've done a lot of work to get here. Uh, but New Jersey, Delaware is that team. So thank you, Jody, for that question. That's a, a great observation to, to share with people. So we have another question here. Uh, who do you think will win this year? Uh, hmm. That's a great question. We, uh, I have know, a good answer for it. Okay. The correct team will win this year, or the right. right team. You know, honestly, at this point, any any team can, that's left can win because they are all great teams. There's a Delaware, Louisiana, three, three, and then Western One. They're all excellent teams, excellent quizzers. The advantage that Western One has right now is they have no losses. So in order for New Jersey Delaware One or Louisiana Three to win the tournament, they would have to then beat Western One twice, because this is a double elimination tournament, which is a hard thing to do. So it's not impossible, um, but Western One does have the advantage of not having lost a quiz yet. Sure, and that's a, a very significant advantage, because when you're at this level of quizzing, every single quiz matters, and uh, being able to have that extra quiz. Now, I know some teams that that's actually hurt, having that extra, because they sort of are calmed down a little bit, and they come in, they don't really, uh, prepared because they won that first round. It's been three days since they yeah. quiz. So it's a little bit hard to get your mind back into it. Now, traditionally, it doesn't happen because if you're sitting at the very top of the nationals bracket, you've put a lot of effort and time into it throughout the year to prepare yourself for this. Uh, and the, the Elkins on the coach, uh, Sister Elkins is the coach of the 
Western team conquered it, and they're just uh, an incredible story. You just hear time and year after year, they have an incredible police program. And so in their position, you want to, you kind of want to be in that position, especially if your team is prepared for it. They know how to handle that weight as well as handle that next step of having to compete against a very competitive team coming through here. So yeah, great questions. Um, and one thing I've seen a lot is, Ryan mentioned, um, it's not impossible to then lose both quizzes. And actually, I feel like, at least in the Florida District, when my undefeated team from round one is defeated in round two, more often they end up losing their second quiz. I don't know what it is, but if they end up losing their first quiz, they often lose their second quiz. And that that's just, uh, that's interesting to me. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's just their nerves get the best of them or if they just get spooked, but that's something I see a lot. Sure. And be sure to share this video. They are really consulting over this, so... Uh, thanks for letting us jump in here. Thanks to New Jersey, Delaware District. They just shared the video. Shout out. Uh, we are we need to have a contest to see which youth residents are going to promote their quiz team the most. And, and I have a feeling that person sharing it for New Jersey, Delaware is actually probably uh, their promotions guy, which I think is Ben. I don't know if the youth president is sharing it as much as it might be Ben Cohen who's sharing it. But I could be wrong. Maybe Joel is sharing it. Sure. But the youth president gets to make that final call of who's going to be that passionate person. Okay. So we'll give a shout. You always have to give a shout out to the youth presidents because they're so cool. Last year we gave them all one of our uh, hoodies, uh, our train like uh, t shirts and hoodies. Uh, so it's been so cool to see all of them using that, and posting on Instagram when they're out. Um, and and yeah, I'm sure we've got another great gift for you guys and for all the uh, men and women of the uh, board of at our general conference this year, yep. which is going to be in Kansas City. And we are, if you're at home and you're not able to make it to Youth Congress, not able to make it to a Bible Closing Nationals, we are going to have the 50th anniversary exhibit at general conference. And that's really exciting. We've built in a way that we can actually move it and get it to different places. So if you're not in Indy, we'd love to see you in Kansas City and for you to be able to go through and sort of see the quiz story as we call it quiz story. So if you haven't yet, just help us out and share this out. Um, and we have a few people that are uh, loving their youth president on here. If you if you know your youth president, you can get, tag them on this and give them some love. In fact, that may be the easiest way to do this. I was tagging a lot of people earlier, but if you're watching and you're connected to your youth president, could you just tag them in this thread and say something like, go Bible quizzing, or hey, come check out the Bible quizzing finals. That would be absolutely awesome to help us get the word out a little bit. Good shout, shout out to Hannah Billingsley for you want to say something to your sister? Actually, I was going to ask, do we have anybody watching that's on their way to you? I feel we have an ambiguous question here that we will avoid and replace. All right. And so our replacement question for question number 12 is also a three-part question worth 20 points question. According to David's words about the Lord in verses 27 and 28 of chapter 2, that will... Read to... Interruption. Thou wilt not do what? Thou hast done what? And thou shalt do what? Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. That is correct. Question number 13. Is worth 20 points? Question. Verses 13 and 14 of chapter 19 record. Yellow, one. Interruption. Of chapter 19, record. That who took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. Certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priests which did so. That is incorrect, and this interrupted question will be reread to New Jersey, Delaware without interruption. It's worth 20 points. Question. Verses 13 and 14 of chapter 19 record, there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did what? Read to. Which did so. So referring to certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. That is correct. Question number 14 is worth 20 points. Question. Concerning Herod in the verse that mentions the days of unleavened. Yellow, one. Interruption. 
the days of unleavened bread, what did he do before those days? And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Time. great spot on here he had all the information the problem is so many times on the end of these questions uh, this is a short verse this is coming out of Acts chapter 12 verse 3 it's a short verse um, but so many times what happens on these questions is you're not sure exactly how that final question is phrased now uh, it's good to note on this that uh, many times people say oh well you know it's it's hard to be such a stickler over certain things but you have to remember the quizzers are the ones who are deciding to interrupt so they're the ones who are deciding whether or not they want to jump in and take a stab at this question from this point. Um, and so we definitely, we definitely see this as uh, it was a, it was a great hit, but it just comes down to phrasing that question and making sure you're asking for the correct information at that point. Welcome to Anthony Vandegrift, our North Texas uh, Bible quizzing coordinator, who just jumped on. And hey, welcome to. Gary and Jackie Dornbach, they are pastors out of Kansas City. They've got quiz, or quiz kids, and Jackie was a quizzer back in 2000s, in the early 2000s. Um, so good to see all of y'all jumping on. Be sure to share this. If you're just jumping on this, if you could share this, if you're connected up with your local uh, page, g welcome to, to Brother Sawyer, who's the uh, Indiana coordinator, uh, or no, Illinois coordinator. Sorry, Brother Sawyer, I'm just embarrassing myself. Um, uh, I if you could share this, share the, um, and share it with your district, share it with you know whoever you can, because we definitely want to get this out, especially for those who are cheering their teams on. So, Brother De Leon wants us to talk a little bit more about interruptions. So this gets a. So what do you think, Taylor? What are some of the things you've seen so far in this quiz? Some some great techniques that these quizzers have been using to interrupt. Well, you can definitely tell these quizzers know their material. And not only do they know their material, they know more than their material. They know what we call like chart work um, or their cross references. They know, like if I said the word um, servant, they can tell me how many times the word servant is their material. The question will be reread to New Jersey, Delaware okay, without interruption. It's worth 20 points. Question concerning Herod in the verse that mentions the days of unleavened bread, what happened? Read to. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also? That is correct. Contest, Louisiana. All right, so we have a contest now, and we're jumping back on here in the video. So uh, one, one of the specific ones that I wanted to talk about was an interruption they made just a little bit ago where they hit at a certain point that um, he asked, according to uh, verses 13 and 14 of Acts chapter 19, um, and he, they hit at that point. Um, and the reason quizzers may hit that early, I think it was a direct question. Honestly, I cannot, cannot remember okay. at this point. <laughs> the reason quizzers sometimes hit on that point is it seems super, super early, but if there is one question that can really sum up everything that's happening in both of those verses, their brother uh, Fobier, who is the quiz, the guy you're hearing reading the quiz questions, the quiz master, um, he also writes the questions as well. So he has a good viewpoint from both perspectives of how to take this. Uh, he was a quizzer of the year himself as well, and they are taking this contest down. So Louisiana is taking this contest down, so we'll have a little bit of time to chat here. So um, that's a big question is, you know, uh, how are you gonna finish this? And brother Fobier, if he was a quizzer of the year, uh, he understands all the different perspectives, and so he tries his best not to trick quizzers, to, to give them something to expect. And in this case, um, 
uh, the, after the interruption, they were looking for a way to be able to finish the verse, and they asked a who question, like who did these things, um, whereas the answer ended up being the people did these things, the seven sons of Sceva did what, and that sort of finished out all of that, those two verses, and that's something, if you're a quiz listener to this, that's a great tip to look for, especially in closer questions, don't look for a quick thing that you can just tap, pull out of it, try to figure out how does this complete the thought that me as a quizzer, I should understand the whole thought here. This contest is denied. This contest is denied. Let's time out, out again. Oh, and we're on a timeout. So we will stay in here. So Taylor, where are we at in the quiz? How has the quiz shifted from the way that it originally started out a couple minutes ago? Well, in the tens, Louisiana three um, dominated, for lack of better words. I think I'm allowed to use that word. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> They definitely did dominate the tens. They scored a large uh, percentage of the ten point questions. But now the tide has turned and New Jersey Delaware is up by five. So um, although Louisiana three um, got two twenties in a row because of their uh, their interrupted errors on questions thirteen and fourteen, and then New Jersey Delaware then getting the rereads, um, New Jersey Delaware taking the lead by five points. But it's still anyone's quiz. I mean, this sure. quiz nowhere near over. It's probably going to go back and forth. Um, I would say until the very end. Sure. And it's something that's very significant to notice how quickly this can change. Because three questions ago, it was 115 to 40, which is a great lead to have as a team. Tie. And we'll let's jump back in with more quizzes. I'm in. Question number 15 is a two-part question worth, 30, worth 20 points. Question. Paul spoke of worshiping whom and belief. Yellow, one. Interruption. Spoke of worshiping whom and believing what, according to Acts chapter 26, I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Time. That is incorrect, and this interrupted question will be reread to New Jersey, Delaware without interruption. It's a two-part question worth 20 points. Question. Paul spoke of worshiping whom and believing what, according to verse 14 of chapter 24? Read to. So worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. That is correct. Question number 16 is a cross-reference two-part question worth 20 points. Question. In which verse does Peter refer to speaking? Yellow, one. Interruption. Speaking freely. And in which verse does Paul refer to speaking freely? Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Acts chapter 26, verse 26. That is correct. Question number 17. Question number 17 is a four-part question worth 20 points question. According to Isaiah's prophecy of Jesus recorded in chapter 8, verse 33, in what was? Read to. Interruption. In what was what taken away? And who shall declare what? Why? In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare generation? For his life is taken from the earth. That is incorrect, and this interrupted question will be reread to Louisiana without interruption. It's a four-part question worth 20 points. Question. According to Isaiah's prophecy of Jesus recorded in chapter 8, verse 33, in what was what taken away, and from what is what taken? Yellow, one. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. His life is taken from the earth. That is correct. Question number 18 is a cross-reference two-part question worth 30 points. Question. Unto one of the centurions in verse 17 of chapter 23, Paul said what? Read to. Interruption. And 
to the soldiers and to the centurion. Paul said what in 27 verse 31? Bring these to a man under the chief captain, for he had a certain thing to tell him. Except these abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. Time. Now, as the judges are talking, they're listening to this right now. Uh, I do want to say that you all at home who are watching this or on the road or coming to NAYC, you can do something that nobody that's here can do. Because everyone that's here has to stay quiet. They can't cheer people on. Uh, and so I wanted to, I don't know if this could get uh, really exciting or really bad, but you have the ability to like whenever somebody gets a question right. If you want to cheer them on, just hit that like button a whole bunch of times. So let's go ahead and get a practice round at it. If you, or you can do the heart, the like or the heart. Those are your only two, nothing else. Uh, and you can, everyone at home, let's see if you guys are coming through with some likes. And so, there we go. Thank you very much. Just pop it. Yeah, we got a flower. Thank you very much. No tears. All happiness. Yes, there we go. Thank you very much. So if the quizzers get it right or they make an incredible interruption, feel free to react and be able to give some uh, great reaction here. So this is important to these quizzers because I'm sure the quizzers will come back and watch this at some point. So let's be really positive and encouraging of them. I want to welcome Brother Nathan Reaver, our North American quiz master, just joined the feed. I, Brother Reaver, if you are here, you need to come over and say hi to everyone. Uh, he is probably just very close to here. Let's see if we can get him to come by. And so, Taylor, let's jump over to our video here and um, tell me a little bit about, you, you, in addition to serving as the Bible prison coordinator, you're also the, um, the I want to call it the assistant youth president, the youth president's <laughs> wife of Florida. So you do a lot of stuff with youth congress. Tell us a little bit about what's happening with youth congress. Well, it's really exciting. Youth Congress has started setting up already, and I've seen some videos of their setup, and it's going to be crazy. I'm so excited to see over 30,000 people gather together um, in the stadium. And, like, somebody posted a picture today or a video of the view of even the level 100 seats, and it seems like you're right there. So I'm super excited. They're already setting up the arena. Um, they're setting up the exhibits, and so you do not want to miss it. It's going to be fabulous. It's going to be uh, Sort of like memorable, yep. unprecedented, yeah. uh, unforgettable, unforgettable. Yeah. Oh, Brian, please don't say what. Um, but increase our I, viewership. I'm super excited, and I'm really proud because a Florida boy is preaching um, one of the general sessions of Congress. Evangelist Victor Jackson is an amazing preacher. He was one to God through CMI, through Campus Ministry International, and uh, he's young. He's in his 20s, and he he is. I'm going to be preaching the general session, one of the general day sessions at Youth Congress, and so um, as a, and actually we're out of the same home church as well. So as a, um, as a person from Florida, as a youth president's wife, as a friend, I'm excited to hear Victor preach. I'm excited for everybody, but I'm a little extra proud of Victor. Sure, most certainly. It's going to be an incredible time. I've we've had in, in my life, I've had so many great experiences at Youth Congress, and, and just the move of God is absolutely incredible. So if you're coming to Youth Congress. Why don't you go ahead and just hit the like button so we can see who all is coming to Youth Congress. Just pound it. Um, it's going to be a great time. Uh, we've seen the area. I mean, the, the stadium is like nothing you've seen before. Um, it's absolutely enormous. Um, you can get your exercise just going around to the booths. So for those of you who are really trying to improve your spiritual life and your physical life, it's a great opportunity for you to get some exercise. Um, in addition, I'm sure, to all the worship you'll be doing. Uh, at, at, along with you know all the all the things that are happening, all the different events that are happening, um, I, I may have mentioned it, but the GYD, I'm just so proud of them. They, they've been absolutely incredible working with us. We weren't sure whether or not we could fit the exhibit over there, and they did their dead level best to make sure that we were able to get this over there. So if you're if you're coming in the north entrance, that is incorrect. This interrupted question will be reread to Louisiana without interruption. It's a cross reference two part question worth thirty points. Question. Unto one of the centurions in verse 17 of chapter 23, Paul said what? Unto the centurion in verse 31 of chapter 27, Paul said what? Yellow, one. Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. 
Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. That is correct. Contest, New Jersey, Delaware. So while they're in this contest, let's just jump in here and look at what's happening on the score. So Taylor, the score is 95 for New Jersey, Delaware, 155 for Louisiana, 3. What does that mean in the scope of this quiz? Okay, so Louisiana 3 has a 60-point lead, and there are 60 points left to be earned. So in order to win, New Jersey, Delaware has to uh, earn both questions. Okay, they're just bringing the test down. Okay, so, and actually, Pastor Beardsley bringing it down. So very rarely do you see uh, the coaches coming out. So this is, he must have something really good to bring his laptop down. Anyway, there's 60 points left, and New Jersey Delaware has to get both of them to tie unless Vincent has six correct, and he does not. So the best they can do at this point is um, if New Jersey Delaware gets both questions, they would tie it at 155 to 155, and then they would go into overtime. And overtime is three 20-point questions. And at the end of that, those three 20-point questions, if it was still a tie, which is not common, but it does happen, then they go into sudden death. Um, they just read 20-point questions until that tie is broken. Um, I, I doubt it would get to that point here. So, but it's possible. So what that means for Louisiana 3 is they only need one of the questions correct or they need the other team to miss one. And even if it was not interrupted, they could even miss one of the questions and still win as long as it wasn't interrupted. So they have a little bit of more um, flexibility in what can happen for that. However, it also puts them out of a scary situation because you're up by 60 points. You don't want to come in too early, interrupt too early, get it wrong, and then get the point, other team to reread because then you've only lowered your lead to 15 points. And, um, so as a question for me, I like to play it safe, and I really, it was almost hard because I wanted to back up and just like let the other team lose it for themselves, but also you want to secure the win for yourself too. So sure. I'm interested to see what Louisiana 3 does in this situation. Sure. I know a lot of coaches that they really emphasize quiz your game. Uh, some quizzers are great at being able to pull themselves back and, and go for it. Some quizzers uh, are much better at just quizzing every single question the same. Um, hey, welcome to Nathan Smith, uh, the new Arkansas Youth President, a friend of mine. Uh, welcome to the feed. We've got some other Arkansas people who jumped on. Uh, Anthony from the Lepanto Arkansas team. Um, uh, we did have a question. When are the finals? The finals, uh, just as a recap, are 430 for the intermediate, and that's on the Eastern time zone, is that correct? Eastern time zone. Um, and then 530 on the um, Eastern time zone for the experience. Now, the experience happen immediately following the intermediate, so don't jump on at 530, because uh, you may miss a little bit. Make sure you tune in a little bit early if you're just wanting to see the experience. Now, our intermediate teams, let's jump over our intermediate matrix just to prepare people for what exactly they should see. Um, and in the intermediate division, the team from Illinois uh, won, uh, took the uh, first round. They won it completely through, which they did a great job um, competing, great job being able to win the first round. And again, like we discussed, they're sitting and waiting That's for the team, team to come out for them. Bloomington, Illinois. And that's the team from Bloomington, Illinois. Great team, solid program there. Uh, and they, so they're sort of waiting. And then they're going to be competing against the Western Three team. And the Western Three team is the team from Eureka, California. And they have come all the way back through the second round of intermediate competition. So they've done a tremendous job. But they have literally quizzed. Let me, let me just count it for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine quizzes to make it back through the second round, which is an incredible feat to be able to come all the way through that and get finals. And the Bloomington uh, team, Bloomington, Illinois team, in the experience division was Illinois 2, and they actually secured, they tied for ninth as well, so they're also getting a trophy. So the Bloomington Church has a lot to be proud of this NABQT because both their experience team and their intermediate team um, will be bringing home a trophy, and the Illinois 1 team tied for seventh. So congratulations to the Illinois district 
for performing so well at the NADQT 2017. A lot of great, um, a lot of great quizzing from them. Um, uh, Nathan from Illinois to experience, he was the best contester here. I love listening to this contest. It was so, um, he was so fun to listen to. He had interesting insights on questions. Um, it was just great to see him quiz. But congratulations, to Illinois. What a job well done. Yep, great, tremendous job. And, um, Yeah, so tremendous job to them. Uh, we've had several districts that have been stand-up districts. Incredible improvement this year. Um, we've seen many of them that's been years in the making, and they're just sort of seeing some things click. So uh, the Louisiana district, like in the experience division this year, I mean, they had uh, four of the, let me go back and look at my bracket here. Thank you. This four contest is denied. Okay, so it's a denied contest. Timeout, New Jersey, Delaware. Okay, and they're going to move back into a timeout. So. As Taylor was mentioning on this particular quiz, um, we are seeing a situation where um, we have uh, one team is up by 60 points, only 60 points left. And so uh, it's a uh, conversation that's going on right now on these teams to sort of potentially what questions are going to be asked. Do you remember what type of question question 18 was at all? Um, I do not. Maybe okay. a cross-reference? Okay, uh, but they're asking that question out there, you know, what, what, what type of question is this? Um, and they're trying to figure out, you know, what potentially could be coming. Because many times when you're in the 30 point questions, they're all cross reference. You'll have one that's like a quotation, a, a quotation like direct. and you'll have one that's like a direct. And a direct question is essentially one question. So they may be, there might be three verses where Jesus talks or Paul talks. And they may ask the question, what does Jesus say in these three verses? Or what does Paul say in these three verses? It's a longer answer, but it's just a direct. Let's jump in and see what happens. Thank you. Question number 19 is a cross-reference question worth 30 points. Question. Stephen is named in... Red to... Interruption. Stephen is named in which four verses? 6 verse 5, 7 verse 59, 8 verse 2, 22 verse 20. That is correct. Question number two. We have time out, Louisiana. And if you can't hear from the crowd in there, they sure have a way of making these incredibly, incredibly tight. So that was an incredible interruption. Can you break down that interruption that Vincent just hit, hit right there? Yes, that was actually a very short 30-point question. It was a cross-reference that was just simply Stephen is named in which four verses of study. Um, I personally felt like he hit it a little late. I mean, Stephen is named, and I probably would have hit it maybe even, well, granted, I don't have one up there, and I never got to this point either. But I was actually kind of surprised that it made it as far as it did because he's only named four times in all of our study, and I don't think he's in any um, duplicate chapters. I think he's in four separate chapters. There's not many things that could have been asked about it as just a regular cross reference question. So I was surprised by how late they waited to answer it, um, but he pulled it off. Great job. Sure. And what happens many times, oh, actually we've got a few seconds left and we're just going in, so let's watch the ending of this quiz or potentially over time. In. Question number 20. Is a quotation question worth 30 points? Question. Save that the Holy Ghost. Red to interruption. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Quote the verse immediately following this one. But none of these things move me, neither count of my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and to the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That is correct. Contest, please. Contest, please. <laughs> we have Contest wow. Louisiana. And so in an incredible turn of events, uh, Vincent Beardsley just hit that question um, spot on. Uh, it was a question where you know it's going to be either preceding or following. So Taylor, if, you, if you're sort of in that situation where you know it's going to be, it's going to quote a verse and it's going to ask you to quote one before or after, what normally goes through your mind when you're trying to make that decision? Well, this was a 30-point question, um, so when you have to pick the verse preceding and the verse following, you're going to go with length. And the 
10 point quotation questions, short verses, 30 point quotation questions, long verses. So um, I don't know what the preceding verse said. It was verse 22 of, I think, chapter 20, maybe. I'm not sure if it was short or long, or even if we've studied that verse. But 24, the verse he quoted, was the longer verse. Um, something strategy to consider was this was Stevens, I mean, it's not Stevens, this was Vincent's um, seventh correct question. So if this contest is denied, going into overtime it's three twenties. if he gets the first one right he's quizzing out he'll get 10 extra points he's up by Tied. 30 okay t- okay uh it's a contest this contest has been withdrawn it's been withdrawn and this quiz it's tied no it's going into overtime right. okay so they're going to do three 20 point questions Give if vincent were to get the first one like overtime questions and uh if Vincent were to get the first one he'd quiz out and win an extra 10 points that puts over ahead by 30 points however um because they're 20-point they're questions, They're 20-point right? 20 20 questions, questions, so they'd be up by 30 with 40 points left. Sure. Now, by what we've seen so far, the three remaining, the, the two remaining quizzers, actually we three, the three remaining quizzers from New Jersey, Delaware, are not as quick to the buzzer as the three remaining quizzers from Louisiana. So Louisiana could still potentially win the quiz because their quizzers have been a little faster to the buzzer than the remaining New Jersey, Delaware quizzers. So even if Vincent were to get the next one to quiz out, it'd still be a very close quiz. Uh, Caleb and Marcus, are those the other Beardsley brothers? And then Candace, is that the daughter? Um, they would still need to be very competitive and, and need to beat Louisiana three to the buzzer and try to secure that second 20 points. It's gonna take two, um, getting two of the 20 point questions correct in order to win this quiz. And this is a, a good observation. Many times I have seen after the main quizzer quizzes out, another quizzer step up out of nowhere yeah. and be able to absolutely change the quiz. Because at this point in the quiz, um, Vincent is the only quizzer on New Jersey, Delaware, who's answered a question. And this is um, significant because it's very much a different style than Louisiana 3 has. But I see many of these quizzes where another quizzer who just may not have been able to get to the buzzer makes that perfect hit. Now again, just to recap what Taylor said, there's three 20-point questions. And because Vincent, we discussed this a little bit earlier, he has seven correct, he can only get one right. So this is what's going through the, the Louisiana team's mind. Um, if I were a coach, I would definitely recommend for them to still quiz their game. Don't just hold back and let him answer. I tried that before and it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't end up good. You still want to quiz your game. You want to make smart hits because even though he only needs one to quiz out, you still need two to win. And that should be your focus as a quizzer. I think they're still working on getting these questions through here. Um, so now on... All right, we have timeout New Jersey, Delaware. So timeout New Jersey, Delaware. So on, and this is overtime. If someone asks the question, is this the championship quiz? This is actually the quiz that will determine who goes to the championship. So it's an incredible quiz. When you get to this point in the bracket, uh, and even a little bit earlier, there's no quiz that's just going to be an easy layover quiz. These are exceptional teams that have studied every day of the year. They haven't went on and off and had a, uh, you know, some, they might have had a bad quiz or a good quiz, but they've been quizzers who've been consistent, they've been studying, and so we definitely want to be honored them, uh, whether they answer a question or not. These quizzers who are at this level have been dedicating themselves to the word and, and putting it in their hearts, um, and so we're super excited that they've made it this far, and to be in an overtime quiz to determine who goes to the championship is absolutely incredible. It's absolutely nerve-wracking, um, and we're definitely seeing some exciting movement from it. And to put that in perspective, I think I was a judge for approximately 60 quizzes this tournament, and we didn't have one quiz in our session going to overtime. So this is the first quiz I have seen going to overtime, at least in session A or the general session. And one other note, and Sister um, Pam Carter made note of this, um, Carson, it looks like, let me confirm this, but it looks like Carson has four, a, four errors. And what this means is that he's the, the top quizzer for the yellow team, the Louisiana team. If he gets one more error, he will go out of the quiz. Now, uh, that's definitely could hurt the team, but at the same time, we see a very strong, um, and we said this even before the quiz, we see a very strong contribution to 20-point questions amongst all the different team members on that team. So it definitely would be a change and a shift. Yeah. Um, if it's simple, then we're just gonna see two an- two ever answers, two questions wins. If they decide to make it fun yep. and interrupt and miss, and then the other team missed the reread, there's no telling where we should go. But at this Time point, in. we're looking for who's gonna each get team two of the 20 point out during our overtime period. We have three 
20 point questions during our overtime period. Should the tie uh, continue at that point, we will go into sudden death, all right? Not as ominous as it sounds. <laughs> question 21. Is worth 20 points, question. What seven men are named in chapter? Red, two. Interruption. Are named in chapter six, verse five. Stephen, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas. That is correct. Question. Vincent, that's your eighth correct question. Let's give him a hand. That's his eighth threat. So let's see what happens. And we here. have a timeout, New Jersey, Delaware. So and New Jersey, Vincent. New Jersey, Delaware just called a timeout, um, and they're sort of trying to create this strategy here. It's very intense here. Um, I don't foresee this happening, but the Louisiana team could potentially interrupt a question, and if it's not answered um, correctly, uh, they. Um, well, because he quizzed out, they're up 30 points now. So um, if they miss the question, Louisiana team misses a question, there's a very low chance that they could be able to uh, stay in it. In fact, I don't, I don't think there's a chance at all. Let me look at the score sheet because I don't think anyone can quiz out. One, two, three. Right. So no one can quiz out. So uh, while Louisiana, it seems like they might have the upper hand here at the very same time, they have no wiggle room. There's no opportunity for them to say, hey, well, let's just take a stab at this one, stab in the dark. You want the question. You want control of the question. If the other team wants to interrupt, then great. Uh, but if you're the coach, you want your team to be answering the way that they answer. I'm in. Question number 22 is worth 20 points. Question. Peter referred to Sapphira beholding. Yellow, one. Interruption. To Sapphira, beholding what in Acts chapter 5? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. That is correct. Question number 20. I'm sorry, question number 23 is a quotation question for 20 points. Question. This. For I have not shunned to dig. Red, one. Interruption. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Quote the verse immediately following this one. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. That is correct. Contest, please. You contest, Louisiana. And so this is exactly what we just talked about, yeah. where there's a quizzer that in 23 questions has not answered a single question. Yet, seven months, ten months of study have led up to a point where he's able to jump in. He, he may not be what people call the ace quizzer, but he's able to jump in and be able to contribute. Incredible interruption, same situation we faced earlier. We've got to quote the verse and figure out, do they want me to quote an additional verse following or before it? So it's most certainly a, um, uh, an intense quiz. Maybe uh, Louisiana 3 has an option here. A very, very... Often, as Taylor mentioned earlier, if if it's the last quiz of the question, last question of the quiz, you contest. You always contest um, because there might be something that you missed that your coaches might have caught along with as well. So um, they are in the middle of that. The audience is on edge right now. Um, absolutely incredible. Let's see what they do with this. This contest has been withdrawn. We have timeout, Louisiana. And so Louisiana withdrew the contest. There are no questions. Um, <laughs> it doesn't move to sudden death. There are no questions left. Um, and um, this is, I mean, this is really astounding, really incredible to see them down by that point and come all the way back up to this point in the quiz. Okay, so Ryan, if the quiz is theoretically over, there's no more questions left, why did Louisiana then call a timeout? Sure, sure. Now, there are um, a lot of people that have different coaching reasons for this, but in so many times, this is the last opportunity that this team will be at the quiz board this year. Um, and for many, and, and I don't think it's in this situation, but in many situations, it might be the last time that the quizzers even had a quiz board for their career. So the coach called a timeout after, after question 23 in this case, just to calm them down and have one more conversation. 
to remind these, these students who they're, they're placed third in the nation, an incredible, incredible place to be able to be, just to remind them, hey, we did this for the right reasons, we studied, we put the word of God in our heart. We might not have got first, but we certainly... is now closed. You may relax. Let's have a great hand for these two teams. Let's give it. Great thumbs up to these teams. Congratulations to both teams. I have not seen a, an overtime quiz this entire time, and we just saw it in one of the most intense quizzes ever. We up and down, um, but let's see if we can do a quick recap of this before we break for our uh, break for about 30 minutes or so before we move into the preparing to war the ribbons. So Taylor, how what was the shift of this quiz, and sort of uh, what what sort of kept them in the game? Okay, so up through question number 11, Louisiana was leading and had a really strong lead. And then question number 12, Vincent came in, Interrupted came in and got it correct. And then he proceeded, uh, Louisiana then proceeded to get the next three in a row wrong. Not only were they wrong, they were interrupted, so they got reread to Leaders Delaware, who got the rereads correct. And so that really turned the quiz from 115 to 40. That's a 70 point lead in favor of Louisiana three. And then it became. Um, 120 to 85, a 35 point lead by Energy Delaware. And so that was, I would say, that was kind of the turning point. Then it did go back and forth the rest of the quiz, obviously, and then until we hit overtime. Sure. And again, it was a very interesting decision by them to have Vincent hit. Uh, I might have, if I were the coach of New Jersey or Delaware, I might have had uh, him sit back a little bit because the other team had to get two to be able to win. It almost encouraged him to interrupt quicker. But the way that the method that they chose was say, they said, Vince, if you get it, take it, get the 30 points, and then we'll work from that point on our next decision. Um, it, it definitely was uh, a strong quiz by both teams. We're super proud of them. So congratulations to both teams. We will be back with the experience finals, immediately following the intermediate finals. I hope those will be on a separate live video, so keep an eye out and, and be sure we can jump on a separate live video that you're able to share and jump in there and, and, and get everybody back connected with us. So thank you very much for everything.